All right, so welcome to podcast episode number 14. We are going to talk about the 11 most critical things that you must, must, must know about when buying a franchise or owning a franchise. And look, this is not theory, okay? I learned these lessons over years of being a multi-unit franchise owner myself, opening a location from scratch, literally from the ground up, uh, buying and turning around, and then exiting a resale franchise, um, having consulted with hundreds of prospective franchise buyers over the last 18 months, and then also getting access to inside data and insider secrets to the franchise world over the last year or so. So this is gonna be a really important episode and let's just jump in. Welcome to the Zero to Profitable Franchise Podcast, the best place for you to come to figure out the right franchise to buy and how to get and stay profitable. My name is Tark Johnson, and I've bought, grown, and sold multiple franchises and got myself free from corporate America, and now I'm on a mission to help you do that too. Here you'll find some of the most in-depth, profitable franchise secrets, tangible strategies, and specific mindsets to help you create your dream life through franchising. Hey, before we jump into the episode, if you've gotten value from any of the content I put out, it's not easy and and it really takes a lot of time to create this content. So if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like button and drop a comment, anything, even a smiley face. It helps the YouTube algorithm show the episode to more and more people. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, please rate and drop a quick review. Both of these things are free and take no longer than 30 seconds. Thanks so much, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey guys, so as always, uh, before we jump into the video, if you are looking to buy a franchise and own a franchise uh, in the next 12 months or less, then you can go to buyaprofitablefranchise.com and check out a free uh, masterclass that I've created on how you can do exactly just that. Okay, so number one is the idea is sexier than the reality. The, sometimes the idea of owning a franchise is actually like in your mind, you imagine it to be this like grandiose, amazing thing. But the reality is it's hard work. Like it's a lot of hard work. And so like if you are going into buying a franchise or your motivation to buying a franchise is that you want to work less then forget it. You Then you should 100% not own a franchise. Because the reality is in the first year and probably the first year or two, you will work more. And especially if you plan on keeping your full-time job and doing it as semi-absentee, think about it. Like you're going to be doing your full-time job. And then outside of your full-time job, you're going to be working on your business. So you're definitely going to be working more. And then even if you are going to be owner-operator, the reality is like you're you're getting the plane off of the ground, right? So getting the plane off of the ground, you're burning so much more fuel because you're just trying to get it up in the air. Now, once you get it up in the air, then yes, you might be able to coast or or just maintain. But the reality is that the time it probably takes for a business to reach maturity is somewhere around three to five years. So stop thinking that it's going to be this glamorous thing and you're going to work less and, well, I just want to create passive income. You can but it's probably going to take three to five years. Number two, don't buy a franchise just because you think you can make a lot of money. I mean, that's literally the worst reason to buy a franchise. You know, just because you're like, oh, those franchises are making a ton of money, right? Crumble Cookie is is probably a great example. Now, some of those stores do make a ton of money, a lot of money, but literally on Crumble's website, they say like, we want owner operators. We want people that are willing to get their hands dirty, to get in the back of the store. And so, yeah, I mean, if you just think you're going to make a lot of money, it's a terrible reason to buy a franchise. And here's the reality. In all franchise systems, there are varying levels of performance. There are top performing franchise locations. Probably you got the top 20%. Then you have the bottom 20%, and then you got the middle performers. Even in KFC, McDonald's, Taco Bell, 7-Eleven, some of the biggest franchise names that you know, every year, the biggest franchise names that you know actually close locations because they're not doing good. They're not performing well. Yes, they still have locations that crush it and do millions of dollars a year in sales, and they have locations that are average performers. 
So where you are going to end up on that scale, you have no idea in the beginning. You can try to influence it by, by using things that I talk about in the free franchise masterclass at buyaprofitablefranchise.com, things like market demand and profit potential and all those different things. But the reality is you just don't know. And so no matter what, if you're just going into franchise thinking, well, I'm going to buy this franchise because I can make a lot of money, and it turns out to be a lot more work than you think, and you don't have like any sort of like belief in the business or is interest or passion, then you're going to you're going to die out pretty quickly with it or it your life will become miserable. And so it's okay to validate the profit potential of a franchise to make sure that hey, like I can actually make the money I want to make, but you also need to make sure number 1 you have a belief in the business and what it does. You have some sort of interest in the belief for the business or you have some sort of passion in the belief for business. Don't just do it because you think you can make a lot of money. All right, so number three is to put a firm deadline on when you want to buy a franchise. Have you ever heard of something called Parkinson's Law? Parkinson's Law states, and I want to read it, it's the old adage that work expands to fill the time allotted for its completion. It's kind of like, have you ever set like an hour for a meeting that probably didn't need an hour. Like the reality is it probably only needed 20 minutes or 30 minutes. But for some reason, the meeting actually takes an hour. Well, what happens is that's Parkinson's law. Like the the work expands to fill the time allotted for it. Have you ever had a time where like you set a deadline for something like a month down the road or three weeks down the road and literally like you do it on the last day because you procrastinated? So... The point of this is when you put a firm deadline when you want to buy a franchise, then it forces you to have to make decisions and take action. Like I see so many people, I have people that reach out to me that watch the YouTube channel or listen to the podcast where like they've been looking at a franchise for a year, a year and a half, two years. And it's like, how could you be looking for two years? It's because you're just dabbling. <laughs> like you never put a deadline. So you're just kind of like, like like dibbling and dabbling throughout the process. And so there's also that analogy, right, that sharks will grow to the size of their tanks, right? So if you don't give yourself a timeline, no matter how impossible or unlikely it seems, you may never do it. Or you may wind up doing it a year, two years, three years later, and you miss out on a tremendous amount of opportunity. The reality is the marketplace is just getting more and more and more competitive. So like I've had clients who came to me very unsure of if they had the money, the skills, or could actually pull off like buying a franchise or resale business. And the reality is like if I see the potential and I think a client can do it, I let them know. Like I speak my belief in them into their vision. Like you can do this. Like just lean on my belief in you. I'll help you make this happen. But the reality is, and you have to show up and do the work. And so I've had many clients like that where they they made it happen. Actually, a, a client, Joe, just did this. Like he he was telling me, like, I didn't think I could pull this off. I didn't think I had the money for it. And within 90 days, he bought a resale franchise that the owner's making a hundred, the owner, the previous owner's making a hundred grand a year in profit. And he got the business for a steal. So put a firm deadline on it. Number four is to be open-minded. So did you, did you see the podcast that I did with Adam, who owns Budget Blinds? So he had initially bought a Supercuts franchise, uh, thinking that that was what he wanted to build. In the corporate world, he was in a role where he oversaw like 50 or 100 locations in the automotive industry. And so he wanted to try to build something similar within Supercuts. He opened his first location, and it just like wasn't what he thought it was. And during that time, his mom had heard about budget blinds and was mentioning it and he brushed it off. He's like, I don't want to own a, a like a blinds franchise. Like that's like not of interest to me at all. Now, six years later, guess what? He wind up buying a budget blinds franchise. And six years later, he's built a over a $4 million a year franchise business with budget blinds. So don't be so fixed on one thing thinking, hey, I have to own this type of franchise. Like be open-minded. The analogy that I that I that I always say is be firm 
on the destination and not the vehicle. The destination is like, what 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 are you what are you trying to create? What are your goals? The financial reality, the lifestyle that you're looking to create. But if you're just focused on the specific vehicle, like one specific franchise or industry, well, that may or may not get you to the destination that you're looking to get to. And I hope that analogy makes sense for you and really, really lands for you, uh, because it's all about the destination and less about the vehicle. The question is really, once you've decided on your destination, your vision of how much money you want to make, the lifestyle that you want to live, the type of business that you want to be in, et cetera, et cetera, then you go, okay, which franchise or industry aligns with me getting to my destination in the fastest, most efficient, most fun way possible? Number five is a piggyback to number four, which is to... Look at multiple franchises, not just one. What I see is people have tremendous confirmation bias when looking at a franchise. They, and I've I've made a a previous video on this, which is I think three mistakes to avoid when buying a franchise. Made that video a long time ago, probably like a year ago. And so what happens is people experience a franchise as a customer and then they're like, oh, I wanna own one of these. And they just, they're just looking at one franchise. They get super excited about one thing as opposed to, well, okay, like what other options are there? And I think it's just a reality. I I think it it will never stop because so many times that's how people actually get exposed to the idea of owning a franchise is they have an experience as a customer with a specific franchise and then then that's what kind of baits them. And, and gets their interest going in owning a franchise. My thing is, is people have confirmation bias when this happens. I had, I had a, a client, it was a couple that came to me. They wanted to own this pizza franchise and they hired me to help vet the opportunity, coach them through the process. And I just told them a reality about the food business and then just what questions to ask and things to consider. They did that. They went and did their own due diligence. And then they realized, oh, crap, like we actually don't want to own this franchise. And when they came to me, by the way, they came to me saying, we've already made our decision. Like we are going with this franchise. My question was like, well, why the heck are you reaching out to me? If you already made the decision, I'm going to, I'm going to coach you on how to vet it and rip it apart. And, um, Fortunately, they were coachable, and that was the case. So don't just look at, at at one franchise. Like, Look at a few different options so that you can compare and contrast. Oh, one more thing that I want to add about number five is, for those of you who have ever hired someone, or here's an analogy. You've hired someone, you looked at, bought a car, you bought a house. Like, Have you ever had a time when you're buying a car or a house, and you see the first one, and you're excited about it. You're like, this is the one I want to buy. But then you're, you you have other ones already scheduled to look at. And so you start looking at other ones. And by the time you get to the third, fourth, fifth, or sixth, that first one that you were ready to buy is not even like number three on your list anymore. And so what happened? Like you got excited about one thing. And then as you saw more options, you realized that there were better options that were more excited and met your needs more. This is the same thing that happens when you look at multiple franchises. So if you only look at one, you rob yourself of the opportunity to potentially find a better option. All right, number six, and make sure that you guys stick with me here because um, as we get to some of the later ones uh, in here, they, they are just super important and really, really key. So number six is to be courageous and bold enough to state clearly what you want. What I find is that so many people are scared to say, this is what I want with the franchise. Like, this is what I want. This is the reality I want to create. These are my goals. Instead, they go, eh, eh, I'm flexible. I'm flexible. I'll I'll kind of do anything. Now, yes, I did have a point. Right, we did. We did talk about a number four to be open-minded, but you need to define the characteristics of the business. Like, what type of money do you want to be making? Year one, year three, year five. What does your lifestyle look like in the business? 
If you're saying you want to spend more time with your kids or family and you're opening up a business that is open pretty much seven days a week, those may not be in alignment, right? So maybe you shouldn't be looking at businesses that are, let's say, food businesses that are open pretty much 363 days a year and some of them 12, 14, 16 hours a day. Maybe if if your goal is to spend more time with your family, there are a lot of franchises that are Monday through Friday businesses that they're not open on the weekend because of the type of service that they offer. So be clear on saying, hey, this is the type of business that I want. These are the characteristics of the business. This is what I see in the most successful entrepreneurs um, that are successful in this process of owning or buying a franchise. They know clearly what they want. They've defined it. And it, that's what makes it easy for them to be decisive and make a decision because they're not wandering like, oh, I'll look at this, I'll look at this, I'll look at this. This is one of the key things that I coach and teach in my Zero to Profitable franchise system that I coach my clients through, the, the program, is how to narrow things down in the beginning by going through a process to state clearly what you want. So number seven, just because you're scared, maybe even terrified, does not mean that you won't be successful, right? So what happens for a lot of you in this process is you get so scared towards the end, like the reality of potentially using your life savings or your retirement uh, money or taking out a loan on your house, like the reality of it and the business just really hits you. And no matter how gung-ho you were or committed or excited, once it comes time to jump, like take the leap, you hit the eject button. The, the fight or, f- or flight kicks in. And a lot of people flight, unfortunately. And actually in number nine, I'm going to talk about something that can cause the flight to happen. But here's the thing. It's normal to feel terrified. Like have you ever gone skydiving or, or done something like really terrifying? Like you feel like this massive amount of terror, but then you do it and you're like, oh, okay, it actually wasn't that bad. And so use the fear to your advantage. Feel the fear, feel the the the, the feeling of terror, but then use it to your advantage. And that's what I did. I was terrified opening the first franchise, but I used the fear of failure to motivate me. So I just worked that much harder. I was like that much more persistent and focused because for me, failure wasn't an option. And the reality is, if you don't pull the trigger because of fear, if you don't buy a franchise or wind up owning a business because of fear, you'll live with the regret and that feeling of what if, which in my opinion is worse than if you fail. Like constantly thinking like, what if I did it? Or then actually seeing the franchise that you wanted to open, like open in your area and seeing them crush it. And you're like, man, that could have been us. Then to piggyback off of that, number eight is just because you feel confident and sure or excited doesn't mean you will be successful. So this kind of goes back to the confirmation bias. Sometimes there's people that I talk to where they're like, I'm doing this franchise. I'm super excited about it. I'm going to make so much money. And they just have unrealistic expectations in terms of the amount of work that they're going to have to put in, the reality of it, like all of the points that we talked about prior to leading up to number eight. So just because you feel like gung-ho about it doesn't mean you will succeed. Like there are people that get way too excited, don't do their due diligence, and then, uh doesn't work out. So one of the key things I tell my clients when I work with them, like even if it's a franchise that I've recommended to them, I'm like, look, you still need to do your due diligence. Like I actually want to start like talking, talking them out of it. Or I just want you to know the reality of what it takes. Like know the reality. That's why franchisee validation calls are so, so key. So you should proceed with some level of caution, do your due diligence, but then be aggressive and decisive once you've actually done your research. Okay, so number nine, number nine. This is a really, really important one. Do not switch jobs while looking for a franchise. 
do not switch jobs while looking for a franchise. Here's the reason. Number one, you want to keep your work history because as you go to get a loan, if you need to get a HELOC throughout the throughout the process, a home equity line of credit or an SBA loan, like you want to make sure you have that work history. Um, so that's for one reason. But the main reason is what I've what I have learned in talking to hundreds of you is that the one of the primary drivers to you wanting to own a franchise is that you don't feel fulfilled or happy at work. There's something about you that that you feel like something is missing or you feel frustrated or fed up with the corporate world. And it's because of that feeling of frustration and feeling like something's missing, that pain and is causing you to be motivated enough to do something as crazy as invest hundreds of thousands of dollars to open a business. And so the analogy that I use is it's like a pressure release valve. Like that that pressure of you not being happy, not being fulfilled, and that desire of wanting to own your own business, it's like pressure building up in a pipe. And that pressure is continuing to build and build and build. And at some point, the pressure has to be relieved or you know, there's going to be an explosion. Like the explosion could be a variety of things, quitting your job, like having an anxiety attack, depression, all sorts of things. But when you switch jobs and get a new job, here's what happens. You release the pressure from the pressure release valve. And all of a sudden, the you were so committed before to buying a business, opening a franchise. And now after getting a new job, you're like, ah, I'll push it off six more months. I'll push it off a year now that I'm starting this new job. I've seen it happen a number of times. And so my advice is to stay frustrated just temporarily because that frustration will help you get through the finish line and actually pull the trigger on buying a franchise. And then while you own your franchise, that frustration will continue to be a driver and a motivator for you to get your business to a point where it's doing enough revenue and profit for you to feel comfortable in making the leap, okay? Or at that point, once you've got your business up and going, then you can switch jobs and maybe transition to a job that offers you more flexibility so that you can invest a little bit more time in running your business, all right? Number 10 is to make a decision. Be decisive. Look, if you keep going back and forth on, uh, we're going to buy this franchise, we're not going to buy this franchise, uh, oh, well, let's just look at seven other options, then you'll probably miss out on the opportunity. And just know this, not making a decision is making a decision, okay? So saying you'll think about it for a month, two months, is not making a decision. Again, it goes back to the Parkinson's law that we talked about, right? Where the, where the work fits the time allotted. Like if you don't give yourself a deadline, you may not make a decision. You just drag it out. It just becomes something you linger with that you don't make a decision with. There's, there's a, a funny quote or analogy of there are a lot of dead squirrels that could not make a decision. You get it? They're just like bouncing back and forth that way, that way, that way, that way. Have you ever had it where you're driving and you're like, squirrel, just run that way. Like it doesn't even matter which way you go. Just make a decision. But it's that teetering back and forth that actually is the most dangerous thing to do. It's not making a decision and making a bad decision. Like so many of you are so scared of making the wrong decision that you just don't. You just don't make a decision. So get accountability, set a deadline. And I have a, a video called The Fear of Buying a Franchise. Go watch that video. It'll help you. Number 11, last but not least. Last but not least. And before I go into number, number 11, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. Uh, make sure to comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are and which of these points 
stood out the most to you. But number 11 is don't expect the people closest to you to be supportive of your goal to own a franchise. So that means your spouse, your husband, your wife may not be like fully supportive. They may be very cynical or really scared or really terrified or your friends or your family. They may try to talk you out of it. And you have to be very careful here. One of the decisions I made very early on around 15 years ago was that I was going to do my best to only take advice from people who had the results that I wanted or had accomplished what I wanted. So as an example, if someone had has not been successful as an entrepreneur and, and they've just worked for someone else for 25 years and they're telling me like, eh, I don't think you should start a business or buy a business, that's not the person that I want to take advice from. Like I want to take advice from the entrepreneur, even if it's someone who's failed, right? Even if it's someone who started a business or multiple business and failed, I want to understand their perspective or I want to understand the successful entrepreneur's perspective. But like I'm not I don't I'm not going to buy into the people that have not tried. And so your spouse may not be supportive of it and it's going to be your job depending upon how committed you are to enroll them into your vision, to sell them on the vision that you believe is possible. And it may take time, may not happen overnight. You know, it may take a few months, may take a year. You may have to keep working on them, but don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up in that process. Uh, my wife in the beginning was not supportive uh, of us buying a franchise. And this was going to be something we had to do together. So, but I believed in it. And, you know, I kept uh, kept doing my best to enroll her on the vision. So those are the 11 things. And if you are looking at buying a, buying a franchise right now, make sure to go to buyprofitablefranchise.com. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I'd love if you leave a comment or, or review. And uh, I will see you on the next one. 